Hey guys, RC here. This is episode 13, Football Manager 21, our Play the Kids save. Uh, I've got to just be very honest with you. Today was a, an insomnia Saturday. I was up at about 1 a.m., uh, started recording around 2 or 3, I guess. I don't even remember, to be honest. Um, and, uh, you know, you see my little pop filter here. Uh, I forgot to move my uh, microphone. Uh, on the earlier recordings again sorry uh, so I had recorded all three episodes for the week and um, was off minding my own business and went I don't think I moved my microphone this morning went back and rechecked the uh, the audio on the three recordings they were crap so uh, I do apologize for that so we have played a run of games quite a few in fact so what we're going to do here is we're going to have a condensed episode of highlights we're not going to play anything out because all the games are played but we are going to show you a, a highlight reel from quite a few games more than normal so probably five or six games to kind of make up for the three episodes that uh i did and it should be fine you know, it'll just be a one-off, uh, but I'll pick and choose the ones we'll look at. So let's get into the highlights. At the end of the, the highlights, we'll come back and I'll show you guys the table, uh, our form, how things have been going. It's been going pretty well, to be honest with you. So all I can do is apologize. Hope you guys don't mind the, the highlight episode. And let's get to it. The first match we're going to take a look at was the first highlight that we were going to watch in the first episode I recorded. You saw a bad pass back. Mudge jumped all over it and made him pay. Made it 1-0 Tiverton. Mudge on the run into the box. Dinks it over the keeper. He's got a brace in the 67th minute. And we were up 2-0. 79th minute. Robinson crossed it. Uh, Leverock got on the backside of a of a you know bounce bouncing header and got their first goal. Tierney puts one in to the back post that made it three to one. Nuevo puts it through to Williams and Williams rounds the keeper, slots it in in the 90th minute, right on the 90 minute mark. Tiverton four, Bath one. We had 18 shots to 13, 3.06 on the XG. Rawlings was hurt in this game. Mudge had a goal called back, a couple of yellow cards. But all in all, the boys played well. Rawlings had to play. We had a uh, uh, injury and a suspension on that right wing, so he filled in. Needed to do a little bit better. Is Cuierdo? He's coming back from injury in this match and just not quite into form yet. The next match was the one we played out in the first episode against Concord. Williams puts one into the net. Brilliant pass by Bliss Cotterell, and that made it 1-0 Tiverton. Williams controlled that beautiful ball through to Mudge, puts it in at the near post, making it 2-0 in the 33rd minute. Couple of deflections in the box, falls to Fullerton. He puts in Concord's goal, and the final there was 3-1. to one. It actually didn't show Tierney's goal in the 95th minute, so let's take a look at that. Cook gets the rebound off the corner, plays it right back to the edge of the six-yard box. Tierney got his head on it, and that was the final. 16-10 to 10 on shots, 3-1 to one on the scoreboard. We handled possession as well. So that was a solid victory for us there. This was the Williams show. Nuevo plays it through. Williams runs onto it. There's his first goal against Weymouth, and it's 1-0 Tiverton. Tierney, Hemmings working the, midf the midfield over the top to Williams, and he puts it in at the near post. His second goal in 30 minutes. Askew would put in a penalty to get one back for Weymouth. 
and the ball is cleared out. Taylor's on it, goes right back over the top. What a first touch by Williams to control it. He's got a hat trick in the 66th minute. We missed a header in the box. We've seen that happening a lot, haven't we? Uh, they got their second goal, making it 3-2. Williams turns on Askew, gets into the box, beats the keeper at the near post. He has a four-goal game for Tiverton, 18 shots, 11 on target, a 2.37 XG with four goals all coming from one man, putting up a perfect 10 in this game. And that continued a brilliant run of form for us as far as victories go. This is an FA Cup match against Flackwell. Uh, they're a lower tier team, not in the playable leagues. And uh, this was a goal fest. So this was an interesting game. Uh, I used uh, some uh, advice I'd gotten from one of you guys to kind of uh, mix up, and I'm gonna let you guys watch the goals. But uh, we took a big lead here. So one of the suggestions had been to play players out of position to let them kind of get on the job training at other positions. That was the best way for them to learn. And at this point, we were up 4-0 in the 22nd minute. And I said, all right. So we did start playing guys out of position. Williams would dink the keeper. That, that was a beautiful goal off the crossbar and just over the line. Tierney knocks that one away, and it's two on three, but Trench has the advantage on the outside. That's the first goal back. They get a header, and look at that volley by Cook from the edge of the box. Just took it on a single bounce. That was two goals. In the 78th minute, Tierney misses a header. It falls to a wide-open Wesley, and that was three goals. At this point, I panicked, put all the players back to their regular position. Ireland catches one out of midair on the volley. Got that one into the net, and that made it 6-3. Uh, we should have cruised in this one, as we had a 5-0 advantage at one point. So, a little bit of a learning experience. We really have to be careful. Probably need to dial back to balanced or cautious when we're playing players out of position with that lead. Just a guess. But we gave it a try, but boy, that makes me nervous going forward. Um, but that got us through this round of the FA Cup. We would move on to take on Worthington in the third qualifying round of the FA Cup, which was as far as the board expected us to make it. So we probably should have lost this game, but Williams goes near post and gets the first goal of the match. Bissix looking for an opening. Slides it through to a charging Rawlings who got outside of Adoye, and he scored. I believe that was his first goal for the club. Bissex would slide another one in. Nuevo cuts behind Williams, picks it up, places it across the keeper, and we would advance through the third qualifying round with a 25-1 to shot advantage. Uh, this wasn't even close. We would move on to take on Hinchin uh, in the next qualifying round. Uh, Rawlings got the deflection off of Green. This would be a bittersweet game, uh, and we'll talk about this afterwards. Cook, you notice Cook's in the game. Uh, this was not as a substitute. This was as an injury replacement for Williams. Cummings gets the goal for Hitch Hitchens. We're up 2-1. to one. Cook takes the corner. It goes near post. There's a goal. And Ireland, we're looking for a fourth here. Hugel on the overlap into Cook, and he's got his second of the match. And we win this one 4-1. to one. Williams was hurt, uh, twisted ankle, and he would be on the shelf for seven weeks. In fact, as of right now, in game where we're at, he is still out and missing. So we will take a look at the squad, statistics, and everything else at the end of the video. This will be the last match of highlights for this video, uh, Hampton and Richmond. Uh, remember, earlier in the season, they were second in the table behind us. Uh, they've fallen off the pace a little bit, mainly because of us, uh, but 
that is, uh, you know, it was still a, a crucial game. Uh, Nuevo with just a nifty touch up into the path of Cook, who has been in the starting lineup at this point for a few games. Uh, there's another one to Cook. Bounces off the woodwork, but he does get the rebound, slots in the second opportunity. Grant plays it over to Buddy, and it bounces off of Humphreys. Irving's left with an open netter. Humphreys couldn't recover in time to make a play on the second ball. Cook gets past May. Brilliant layoff to Mudge. Unselfish player, and Mudge gets that goal. Cook with a hat trick. Hemming's got that first one, and Mudge with the 94th minute uh, gave us the 5-1 victory. So let's take a look. The last episode that we watched was the season opener against Borum Wood. So we, uh, we beat Poole, drew with Maidstone, and then have been on one hellacious run ever since. Club record for most consecutive wins, um, unbeaten streaks, you name it. As I mentioned, if we go to the mid center, uh, Graham Williams out for five more weeks with that twisted ankle. Lee White had, a, had an injury, came back, twisted his ankle, and he's out for three more weeks. So he's been out for a while. Uh, I want to say, let's see, season summary. I don't look at this one a lot. Lee White has missed six weeks of the season uh, in two injuries, uh, and he has missed 32% of the season already. So that's not real good. We, uh, we really need him back for depth in the lineup. Taking a look at the squad, we'll sort. Uh, I want to make sure we've got everybody showing. We do. All right, so if we take a look at goals, Graham Williams has been a one-man show. 22 goals in 15 starts uh, and four assists to go along with that, almost playing an eight rating for the season. Tim Cook is now our number two scorer with eight goals, five starts, 10 appearances. And if we take a look at his form, uh, he has scored in three consecutive matches and four of his six and most of those have been as a sub. He's only started the last two. So he has been a dominant player. This two-goal match was the one that Williams got hurt. And uh, he has been a lifesaver for us. It's not like Mudge is playing badly. I mean, he's got an XG of 6.17. He's got seven goals, so he's right on target. Uh, Cook with 10 assists, though. Uh, five for Mudge, along with his seven goals. And Nuevo's come on with a handful of goals recently. Uh, he's up to five goals, seven assists. So our front line is getting it done. Two strikers and our number 10. Hemmings with three goals. Uh, Tierney with three goals off the back line. Those are all set-piece goals. So things are looking really good there. We only made one additional signing that you guys hadn't seen. So we had brought in a couple of center backs on trial. Uh, Eden Allard came in from Slough uh, for $4,300. Four and uh, he is a 22-year-old Irishman. Uh, Two-star current, three-and-a-half-star potential. Uh, he's not the greatest center back in the world, but he's not bad. And, you know, he can do the job. He's playing a 6-8-4, two starts, three off the bench. And also... Uh, we have moved, so John Bliss, who got his debut last year, is still playing pretty regularly. Six starts, seven reserve appearances. Zahir Dahir uh, got his debut and played well. He had a 6-3 in his first outing and 8.1 with two goals. Uh, that was a friendly, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because he's only got one league match. But, you know, but he's played well in limited opportunities. Uh, he is not a bad player. Uh, I think he, you know, he can come in and do a job for us. Uh, he could play both wings, and that's where he's filling in while we have some injury issues like to White uh, missing out on, you know, because he can play both sides. Uh, who else? There was a couple of other people. Uh, Nuevo, 16. Uh, Ray Cavanaugh, we called him up. He has not made a debut yet, but we moved him into the senior squad. Uh, he's still playing mostly 
the uh, under 18s, but he is on the roster for match day just in case we need him. So we've started to bring in a couple of kids. Uh, Bliss and Nuevo have been starting, but two new guys getting into the picture this year. And finances, just, you know, because I know I talked about this, we are down in the hole. Uh, we had another offer come in for Williams, and uh, he rejected it. Uh, and then we gave him the contract extension after that. So we're controlling payroll, but we're still losing money. We probably need to be at about twenty-four to twenty-five thousand a month max. Uh, although we have made a profit, mainly thanks to well, in fact, wholly due to our FA Cup uh, run uh, here through qualifying. So that's real good. Uh, we'd like to get one or two more wins. We drew Scunthorpe. Uh, in the first uh, the first round, so we've reached the FA Cup proper. Uh, they are from the National League, which is one level above us, and they are mid table there. So uh, honestly, they should probably beat us, uh, but that's coming up. We've got a couple of friendlies in there. Uh, so I think what we'll do is, since I did miss some actual games, uh, we'll come back next episode right away with Barnett highlights and that Scunthorpe match. I do apologize again for not uh, not realizing I had the mic off uh, or it wasn't turned on and it was just garbled. You could, it wasn't, you wouldn't have listened to it if I would have just put it up. And yeah, I understand that would have upset only, you know, four or five people, but it would have upset me and I didn't want to put out that kind of quality. Um, so Hope you guys forgive me. Uh, but again, a lot of goals, a lot of action. Taking a look at the table, uh, we at one point were only one point ahead of Hampton and Richmond, and now we're 10 points ahead of Borumwood and 14 points ahead of H&R and 24 points ahead of the relegation spots with Concord, Pool, and Chippenham. Uh, we are scoring a lot of goals as well, plus 26 on the goal differential, 12 wins, one draw, one loss from our 14. So things are looking good, having a great season so far. So hit the like button, subscribe for daily content here on the channel for Football Manager. And I'm going to record the next episode in just a moment, and the microphone's already here, so that one won't be screwed up. I promise. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye.